Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to YouTube, to Top Boxing, the channel you come to for the other perspective. Meaning, we are going to look at this fight in a different light, hopefully, than most of other YouTubers are taking a look at it. At least that's the goal. Okay, what I promise you is that there'll be no merch, there'll be no Patreon, and none of that stuff. So you can relax, and hopefully no tribalism. You can relax and listen to what I hope it to be more like a podcast. You can just take it with you and listen to it, and enjoy it. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Mostly I like for you all to comment because it's what it's about. It's about sharing ideas, strategies, different ways that a fighter can fight a particular fight with different adjustments even into a fight. That's what I like to hear from you all. Uh, what is your take on it? Uh, unlike Twitter, you're not limited to so many characters uh, on YouTube comments. So t take the time and, and write us a comment on what you think we might see in this particular fight. And this episode is more about an interesting fight. Javante Tank Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz. Two great fighters in their own right. Probably didn't think I would see this fight, but I'm glad they made this fight. They were able to make this fight. Love to have seen this fight in an era with, with people in the stands. With that excitement of uh, these two guys coming out of the dressing room these two gladiators coming out and ready for battle. What an interesting sight that would have been. Uh, I kind of imagine what Javante Tank Davis would have came out with in terms of a ring walk. Uh, they, 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 they tend to be getting more interesting as we get along now. So let's talk about the fight. Uh, to you, what do you think this fight is about? But when I when I look at both fighters, I see power versus endurance. Truly, that's what I see. Uh, you know, styles make fights, right? And, and I look at it and I see power versus endurance. Devontae Tank Davis being the guy that knocks everybody out. I think 95% KO percentage. We are. You have a pressure fighter. And Leo Santa Cruz. With somewhere around, I think, 43, 44% KO percentage. So you see power and endurance. Javante Tank Davis, 23 wins, 22 by way of KO. Only one went to decision. Some guy by the name of Jamon Merez or Mirage, I'm not sure how he says his name. Sort of a lanky fighter, too, kind of uh, built like uh, Leo Santa Cruz. Five, five and a half. 25 years old, quite young for a fighter these days, 67 and a half inch reach. Well, you looked at Leo Santa Cruz, 37 wins, one loss and one draw. That loss coming by way of Carl Frampton. Great fight if you haven't seen it. I recommend you watch it because it's going to be relevant to this next fight um, versus uh, Javante Tank Davis. As I see it. Five, seven and a half. So he has a little height on Tank Davis and will look bigger in the ring than Tank at 130. And, and that's another thing we need to take into consideration. That this fight is taking place at 130 and not 135. And, and we all know why that's significant. Uh, at least in... Javante Tank Davis' uh, side of the table. 48% uh, KO percentage, excuse me, not 43 or 44. 69-inch uh, reach. He also has Tank, da Tank Davis in terms of a reach by a couple of inches, which may be significant in a fight such as this. So now, when you look at Santa Cruz, uh, you look at his body type, one thing I noticed about him is how he uses that jab, that lead jab, um, how he sticks it out there, how everything kind of, he operates out of that pick-a-boo stance with his left leg, 
way out in front of him. To some people, the Bantanki being balanced, but to him, those hands being where they are um, on both sides of his temples and his front foot being so far forward, you would think he would be imbalanced, but it seems to work for him to where it's mostly imbalanced in that particular stance. And that's interesting to me as well. And that's how he operates. He walks you down in that particular situation. And I would imagine for a fighter that's smaller than him, it would be like having to climb over his front, his front, his lead foot just to hit him because of the way he positioned that lead foot. It's interesting. And while, and while you're trying to navigate past that lead foot uh, with your foot, you know, trying to have foot placement, he's, he's, he's slowly sticking you with that jab and coming forward. Uh, and that's how he operates. And uh, it, it, makes it, it makes it interesting to see how he approaches this fight because uh, too much pressure against a guy like Javante Tank Davis, uh, especially early on in the fight, can be detrimental. Not enough pressure, and Javante Tank Davis gets into a rhythm, and it's an early night. So it's interesting to how he approaches this. Um, he is a relentless fighter. You know, he has a nice straight right hand. He has this looping kind of, I don't know, it's not a hook, it's not an overhand right that he throws. It looks kind of crazy once you see it, but it works for him too. And he likes to operate with that left to the body once he throws that. That also works for him. Um, now, will that work for him in this fight? We'll have to wait and see. Because when you look at a guy like Javante Tank Davis, although we haven't seen his boxing abilities, but you know it's there. Uh, just about a week ago, I, I looked at a, a post that the Mayweather Channel put up on Javante Tank Davis. Although he was in this um, sweatsuit, he already looks to be on weight, which is dangerous for Santa Cruz being on weight this far out where he could just concentrate on the strategy and the boxing at this point and staying on weight. Uh, and I think that was the goal. To me, that was the goal, get on weight at least a few weeks before the fight and, and, and kind of learn to live with that, with that, at that 130 and, and build on that. Uh, that way you come in into the fight. You don't peak too early.